Hi again, respiratory ultrasound learners. Hopefully, you've taken a bit of a break after our first module and are feeling refreshed and ready to dive into the realm of ultrasound artifacts. Since normal lung is air-filled, ultrasound can't penetrate it well, and we can't see it structurally with ultrasounds like we would with a CT scan. Of course, when the lung is very abnormal, much of the air is lost, and it becomes like any other tissue and relatively simple to see with ultrasound. When the lung is closer to normal, we rely on the fact that air and most lung pathologies produce predictable artifacts, which we can use to understand what's going on in the lung without necessarily seeing its anatomic structure. Let's go over some of the more important ones now and why they are generated. The ultrasound machine assumes sound travels in straight lines directly from the probe to the reflector and then back again. It also assumes that the imaging beam is thin and reflections only happen along the main beam in a way that is dictated by the characteristics of the tissues it, account it encounters. Artifacts happen because these two assumptions do not hold true, and so the ultrasound machine ends up generating an image that is different from what's really going on inside the patient. Knowing how these artifacts happen can help us recognize them, get rid of them when they are unwanted, or, as is the case in lung ultrasound, make diagnoses. Acoustic shadowing occurs when the beam encounters a structure with an ac acoustic impedance very different from that of the surrounding tissues. This results in near total reflection of the beam and appears as a shadow posterior to the structure because none of the ultrasounds are transmitted through. An example is how everything beneath the rib appears black. Reverberation occurs when ultrasound beams bounce between two strong reflectors, such as between the ultrasound transducer itself and the air in healthy lung tissue. Because some of the echoes will be trapped between the reflectors, they will continue to bounce between the reflectors, and it will take twice as long for those echoes to return to the crystals in the probe. The machine will mistakenly assume these echoes took twice as long to return because they were reflected by a structure twice as far and will display a second image twice as deep as the first. This useful artifact allows us to know that there is air just underneath the pleura and this will most often be from healthy aerated lung. This artifact is termed an A-line in lung ultrasound and is the signature of air just beneath the pleura and generally healthy lung. Because some of the echoes will bounce between the reflector 2, 3, 4, etc. times, the ultrasound machine will continue to display lines at multiples of the distance between the transducer and the pleura. The closer to 90 degrees the path of the ultrasound beam is between the two reflectors, the clearer the artifact will appear and more A-lines will be seen deep to the true pleura. This is what is shown here. By adjusting the angle of the ultrasound transducer, we are able to make A-lines appear in greater numbers and more clearly. Comet tail artifact is a type of reverberation artifact from small reflectors repeatedly returning echoes in line with the ultrasound beam. The result is a bright line along the axis of the beam that extends all the way to the bottom of the screen, or the far field. This happens when there are small amounts of fluid or fibrosis in the lung interstitium. Sound back bounces back and forth in the fluid or fibrosis between the pleura and aerated lung. Like with A-lines, the machine assumes that since the returning echoes take different amounts of time to return, they are reflected by deeper and deeper structures. This is displayed as a succession of bright spots, all very close together, that take the appearance of a bright line. 
This is known in long ultrasound as the B line. Ring down artifact is a similar appearing artifact caused by resonance. Ring down happens when echoes enter fluid that is surrounded by air bubbles. The echoes get trapped bouncing from air bubble to air bubble inside the fluid. This makes the fluid resonate or vibrate and so the fluid continually sends ultrasounds back to the probe. This results in the image of a bright hyperechogenic line in the same plane as the beam. However, unlike bee lines, they won't begin at the pleura and also they won't be as well defined. Here is a ring down artifact and bee lines side by side. Notice how a ring down artifact doesn't begin at the pleura and how it isn't as well defined as bee lines that are on the, re the right of the screen. We'll talk a bit more about these in our next module as well. No need to get your eyes checked, you're not seeing double. This is simply our next artifact, mirror image artifact. As previously mentioned, the machine assumes that ultrasounds are reflected only once. Mirror image artifact occurs when strong reflectors inside the body, such as the pleura, make it so ultrasound beams are reflected more than once within the patient. So from, say, the pleura to an organ, back to the pleura, before returning to the probe. The machine will mistakenly assume that these echoes that have taken longer to return are being reflected by a deeper structure, and so will project a second image deeper than the real structure. This is a good point to remember. The mirror image will always be deeper than the real one. Luckily, there are tricks to know you are in the presence of mirror image artifact and ways to reduce it. Small probe movements such as tilting or sliding will often make the mirror image fade a lot if not disappear entirely. Also, if you can see through a structure, i.e. ultrasound waves are being transmitted through it and you are seeing something real deeper, then you know you are seeing a true finding and not a mirror image artifact. This is the case here, where the lung is taken on a tissue density similar to the livers and we can see the verte vertebrae deep to it. If the, the second reflector is irregularly shaped, the mirror image may be distorted as is the case of the mirror kidney here that's located above the diaphragm. The last artifact we'll discuss, but certainly not the last artifact there is, is beam thickness artifact. This results from the ultrasound machine compressing returning information from a three-dimensional structure into two dimensions. This can result in phantom-like images around the lung. It's important to distinguish these from things like complexities in a pleural effusion. The phantom images, inconsistent presence in time, as well as simply seeing how they persist when you scan through them, will help you understand what's really happening inside the patient. That's all for this segment. Take a little break before coming back to our next portion of the tutorials which will focus on long ultrasound interpretation. Also, don't forget to check out westernsano.com for more information, tutorials, and further lectures.